Ross, you're, you're the son of the original owner, and I understand there was quite an unusual situation with this boat in the sense that your father bought it twice. Can you explain <laughs> how that happened? Rare. <laughs> Rare. <laughs> he um, loved the boat, and uh, but decided that he wanted to build himself something a little bit bigger and more comfortable. So he, he'd had this one built for him? Yes, he'd had this... Built for him, the hull was designed by Supreme Craft or McGeady's as we used to call them, yeah. and uh, a typical McGeady type hull, and he did a lot of the interior, my father did a lot of the interior design yeah. himself, as he did with the second boat, but uh, after, I, she was launched in what, about 61, mm. and I think that it was probably around about 667. Uh, he sold it yeah. with the intention of getting a, a bigger boat. But yeah. at that stage, uh, uh, what he hadn't allowed for was the fact that uh, all the boat building, or not all the boat building yards, he wanted to go in particular to salt houses yeah. and get one of their hulls. And uh, uh, there was about a three year wait. And at the time, this boat came back up on the market for some particular reason. The yeah. fellow who bought so, it off him oh, had. Yeah. Yeah, so he bought it to cover the two or three years that the other boat, that he had to wait for the other boat. Always grizzled that he paid more for it than what he sold it for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess, yeah. <laughs> but your memories of the vessel, she was launched in 1961, your childhood would have been on this book? On, on very, board. very much so. We used to get away you know, during the summer, most weekends. Um, I'd be uh, picked up... Uh, virtually off the school bus and taken to a Kahu Bay where she was moored mm. and on board and get out of the old school uniform and uh, put my weekend yeah. Yeah. Um, shorts on and uh, uh, if there was homework to be done on the way uh, down to the bottom end around Ponui, it would be done in this cabin here while the parents were up on the flying bridge. Yeah. But he, still, Simon has done a lot of work, but there's, there'll be bits of the boat that you oh, recognise in that ring a bell. Every bit, you... yeah. I, I believe that's the old galley sink, for instance. Yeah. yeah. But this saloon here is uh, pretty much the original size. Yeah. Uh, there was no interior staircase up to the flying bridge, um, mm. which uh, is a huge improvement to the boat. Mm. Mind you, the flying bridge was an open flying bridge. Mm. Uh, no one worried too much in those days about uh, the, the, the exposure to the sunshine. Yeah, but still, it's good. Uh, it oh. brings back good memories oh. for you to Look. see this boat back out in the water. And... It's just lovely to see it. Um, the roots of the old ship are still here, and uh, uh, I, I just love seeing people do this type of thing to older vessels and bring them back to life yeah. and all credit to Simon and uh, and I believe the previous owners have probably looked after her pretty well too yeah. Yeah. and uh, no it's, it's just something that is fantastic. Mm -hmm. Simon you've owned the boat for about 10 years um, and you've just been through a year restoration was restoration always on the cards when you bought her? Yeah, I think so, Lawrence. When we bought the boat, it needed a paint, uh, and we've just enjoyed. It. We've just been enjoying it as a family for ten years. With it, sort of, I've been putting it to the back of my mind ever since then. But it's, uh, we've decided pretty much that the boat is the boat we want. So uh, the wife gave me leave of absence to uh, to get stuck in. So pull her up on the hard, and so began a full full restoration. And uh, the bones we were working with of the boat were exceptional. Uh, there's some photos of the original cowrie tree and it was a big, beautiful big log, so uh, she's been beautifully built. Uh, so the, the cowrie hull, stringers, frames, that was all in good nick, nothing rotten, you didn't need to replace any of those? No, absolutely terrific, absolutely amazing. And, but, and she's single skin cowrie? Yeah, that's right, carbon And plank. they're full length planks? Uh, they were, uh, initially the boat has been extended by seven feet, which is pretty hard to tell. The, uh, the aft cockpit is uh, below us here has been added on. Not, not yourself, it was no. before your time. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, I believe Lane's did the job, but we've yet to 
trace that one back. Yeah. There's lots of photographic evidence, but none of that particular phase. Yeah. yeah. So you restored her in terms of aesthetic looks and you know, new paint and things like that, but did you change her structurally as well? Yeah, I did. I did some extensive work uh, where I felt she was weak in some of the frames uh, underneath the engine beds and so on. Uh, so we beefed a lot of that up as well. Uh, just while I had the opportunity and I was out for so long. I did a bit of recorking around the garboard uh, and uh, uh, new, new props, new shafts, uh, realigned those, realigned the struts, bearings and so on, that sort of stuff. So uh, yeah, we, we did quite extensive work um, around that. So the engines, uh, it's hard to know, but I guess these are second, third, maybe fourth generation engines that are in this hull. They're Cummins at the moment. Um, but you were saying you had to reprop them, so they presumably had props from a different era? Yeah, so the props were mismatched in pitch, diameter, uh, they had the same number of blades, that's about all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they're counter-rotating props, uh, but also the, uh, when we got new props, the, the shafts needed replacement as well, so yeah. uh, we just went the whole hog, yeah, and yeah. did number. And is the performance difference noticeable? Yeah, uh, my expert engineer, Graham Joy, told me you'd get an extra two knots out of them, which I found hard to believe, but there's, he was exactly right. Yeah. You've got two knots more cruising and two knots more at top speed, so. So the cruising, the same RPM, but you're getting two, two knots more? Two knots more, nine and a half knots uh, at 1600 revs now, which is really fantastic, yeah. yeah. Um, it's a boat which, she's what, 60 years old, uh, launched in 1961. You could have bought a more modern boat. Have you got a thing for vintage vessels? Absolutely. Old classics? Yeah. I mean, you, yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. I want to save, I want to save as many as I can. Um, unfortunately, there's only one, one lifetime and mm. one bank account, but uh, mm. yeah, no, this was definitely, and this is definitely one worth saving. Like, yeah. she's in such good condition. The hull, hull wise and so on. Well, it's what always lets them down is, is things like fastenings and the stanchions and the, the combings, the window frames. And this, I replaced 14 windows in the boat. Uh, Acrylic windows? No, no, they're glass. They're glass, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, the frames always give up because of the techniques that they used to use to put yeah. them in. The little tiny beads and so on, the paint always cracks. And yeah. So we hope to have uh, we've changed all that now. So, mm. yeah. And in terms, I asked you about the structure, but in terms of the berths and that sort of situation, bathrooms, the galley, did you change any of that? Uh, I have already uh, put another shower in here. She's got a large shower now, um, as, uh, two large showers. Uh, and uh, But apart from that, no, the interior layout. Uh, since I've had the boat, uh, I've uh, made a staircase to get up to this level. I built this cockpit here that we're sitting in, mm. the upper cockpit. Uh, I made it easier to get in and out of this one, added another berth up here, so I've done quite a bit inside it. Uh, yeah. And is, what's your typical cruising profile with your wife and children or friends? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's the dinner party boat basically, this is the this is 18 or 20 people for dinner yeah. on board, so we consistently have 8 or 10 uh, uh, rubber duckies, 6, 8 or 10 rubber duckies yeah. tied up to the back at dinner time. Everyone comes over here and they always sit up here so that they can see their boats in the bay mm. from our boat. But nobody sits on their boat and looks at my boat, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. But, but so, no, this is the right sort of... Uh, and, right and, uh, and fuel, do you got a reasonable cruising range on this? Yeah, well, I carry 1,800 litres of fuel and 1,800 of water. So, yeah, we're, we're up, to, um, up to the Bay of Islands. Yeah. Yeah. So you have a, a heritage yourself in the sense that you're renowned for your love of classic vintage vessels. What does it mean to you to have something like this, I guess, as part of your legacy? Oh, it's nice to nice to think it'll be a legacy, but uh, it's, yeah, I just want to save them for, for the future generations. She lasted 60 years. She'd only had four owners since I got her in two of those with the same owner. So the, the yeah. chap that had it built owned it twice. Yeah. yeah. So that means uh, three owners effectively. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, everyone has owned her for at least 17 years. Mm. So uh, uh, the old, old Jack Taylor, the surveyor, who was too old to come and survey it when I bought it, uh, asked me, first question was how many owners she had and I said uh, just the four and he said oh she's a good boat and I said what do you mean Jack and he said oh, she's never scared anybody either in sea in sea ride yeah. you know in the way she handles at sea or in maintenance yeah. so the fewer owners the better the, the, the vessel yeah. the more reliable the vessel which is an interesting but it's a telling sort of yeah. statistic I guess you know if there are fewer people owning they were all happy with it they're all happy with it yeah. they're all prepared to spend the money on yeah. it because they gave her a good time or or she wasn't expensive to maintain or she never needed any 
uh, major work done, so all, all those reasons. So he didn't even feel he had to look at the boat to know just by that information. John Ackleson from Boating New Zealand. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you'd like to see more of these videos, please subscribe to our channel.